Hey guys, Enes here with White Acre Properties. Welcome back. And this is our final video actually for Molden. This two family property that we bought back in 2020 took us nine months to renovate it, but I wanted to show you guys the finished product. So what are we gonna cover on this video? One is how we found the property. Two is problems that we solved for the seller, for the homeowner. Three, we're gonna go over the short sale and the problem tenant that we had to deal here with. And then fourth is the renovation budget, how much we spent and how long it took us. Literally in three days, we'll be out of here signing the closing documents on Friday. So by the time you actually watch this, we'll be completely wrapped up here. This is a fix and flip property for us, meaning we bought it with the intention of renovating, updating and, and selling it. And it's a legal two family. But the way we found this property is actually through a wholesaler. If you guys don't know what that means, please go back and watch some of the other videos. But the brief description, a wholesaler is someone that finds a property, they get it under agreement, they can't close on it for one reason or another and then assign that agreement to another developer buyer. In this case, White Acre Properties was a developer buyer. So we got their contract and we closed on it. So the wholesaler found it, they made a fee, but we ended up getting a great property, a great deal that we renovated it and put on the market. So one other important thing, whenever we buy real estate, especially because we buy properties that are in distress, either a situational distress or the house itself needs work, we as buyers typically solve problems for the homeowner. So it's not a straight regular sale. There is always something that we need to solve in order to create a win-win. And for this particular property, it was a short sale situation. Short sale, what that means is that the bank who has a mortgage on this property ends up accept, accepting a lower offer. So let me break that down a little bit. The seller of the property wanted to do business with us, but our offer of 270,000 was less than the mortgage they had in place. Their mortgage was for $400,000. So either she had to come up with cash at closing or we have to negotiate with the bank to get a lower price accepted, right? So we submitted a, an offer to her. She said, I would love to work with you, but my mortgage is worth 400,000. So at that point, we reached out to the bank and started negotiating with the bank. And the reason why the bank is willing to take a less money than what they are owed is because the property needed a ton of work. This is a legal to family and everything had to, to be renovated, replaced, demolished. So we had to start over pretty much and just keep the exterior walls and that's it. So the bank was happy to get rid of the property, get paid whatever they can, and the current seller, she wasn't in a position to make any mortgage payments. So she was behind by a few months. Again, they were happy to get out of it and they accepted our price. But we put a lot of work with a short sale mitigator. We put a lot of work with the bank itself. It took us, I think, six or seven months to get this done. But at the end of the day, we got a great property at a great price and the seller got out of here to her pretty much next uh, stage in life. Short sale turned to be a win-win all around, but you gotta be familiar with the process. And typically the short sale process starts with coming to an agreement with the homeowner to accept a price. And if it's less than the mortgage owed, then to reach out to the bank. Uh, we did this through a third party, so we didn't get involved into a direct communication back and forth. We hired a third party short sale mitigator. So like I said, it took about seven months for the bank to really review our paperwork, approve our, our offer, and then they gave us 45 days to close on the property. So that's when the fun begins. We had 45 days to raise the capital. Uh, we know that the bank accepted our offer of 270,000. We had to find capital to close on it and then pretty much start renovations after that. What happened in 45 days is yes, we found the money, but then we realized there is a tenant living here that, and she didn't want to leave. So that was another obstacle that we had to solve. Typically the seller should solve that problem, right? Because they own the house. But in this case, she wanted out. She was an elderly person. She had already vacated the house. So we had to deal with the tenant if we wanted to close in 45 days. Otherwise the short sale approval was going to expire and we had to start over. So that's not a win-win for anybody. We decided to actually make, uh, to pay the tenant. Uh, we call that cash for keys. So uh, unfortunately we had to pay her $5,000, uh, which, you know, I, I wish we could just kick her out because she wasn't paying rent. She was a squatter. She was just staying here, but she kind of took advantage of the situation. Uh, the reason why I bring it up though is really it's important to solve problems. We, sh we solve the short sale situation problem and the price, and then we solve the tenant issue. So we got to the, to the closing table, everyone was happy, and that's when the fun begins with the construction. 
So we closed on the, on the property on November 13, 2020. It's a legal two family. We went and got permits and got ready to work. The purchase price for this property is $270,000. Because it was in really rough shape, we had to remove all the garbage and, and debris that was here. Uh, so just on gutting the place, right, demoing all the walls, floors, ceilings, and taking all the trash out, that alone cost us $25,000. That includes the labor, but that also includes 20 or 30 yard dumpsters that we had to get in and out of here. Uh, again, it's not only the, uh, the flooring, the, the walls, but it's the insulation, is the old wire for electric, is the plumbing, is the kitchen cabinets, everything, right? So pretty much we gutted this place down to the studs. Then we decided to build an addition. This house was really, really small for a two, two family. Had a weird layout, very small room. So we decided to build an addition thinking of our end buyer. And in this area, typically an end buyer is an investor, someone that maybe lives in one unit and rents the rest. So we wanted more bedrooms. One bedroom, one bath didn't make any sense. So we wanted to have at least two bedroom, two baths per unit. So we built an addition in the back about 800 square feet to add bedrooms and baths to, to this house. And instead of one bedroom, one bath on unit one, we ended up with two bedroom, two bath on unit one. And then upstairs, instead of two bedroom, the existing layout, we ended up with four bedrooms, two bath. So we added a ton more bedrooms thinking, again, keeping the end buyer in mind and the, and the fact that they're gonna collect more rent. And if they collect more rent, they are willing to pay us more when we sell the house. Uh, what happened is that we had to hire framers for that. They had to follow our architect plans and we ended up spending $42,000 framing the new addition. And, and not only that, but also creating new bedroom layouts, living room, kitchen layouts. So changing the whole layout of the, of the, of the house. Removing the existing siding. Like I said, we kept nothing, right? So we took out the windows, we took out the siding, we took out the roof. Uh, everything that was existing, we replaced. The siding cost us $12,000. The new windows cost us $8,200. The new roof, in, uh, installed cost us $11,000. And these prices are for labor and material. New hardwood floors, we pay about six and a half to seven dollars per square feet uh, for finished hardwood floors. That's labor and installation, and it costs us about $17,500 for all hardwood floors. Pretty much we have hardwood floors throughout unit one, two, and the top floor. You know, when you fix and flip a property or renovate a property, the focus is on the kitchen and bathrooms. We had to install new kitchen cabinets, uh, new granite countertops, new appliances and all that. But to break it down for you guys, the kitchen and vanity for the bathrooms cost us about $13,000. Then we had new floor tile. When you look at the video of the finished product, you'll see it's all porcelain tile in the bathrooms and we have backsplash in the kitchen. So all that tile work cost us 11,200. Then the new electric. So now this is actually where we spend a little bit of money. All new wires pretty much for both units, that cost us $26,000. Plumbing, all brand new cost us $33,000, including the gas line. HVAC system, we have central heat and AC, which I'm thankful for that because it's 95 degrees out and it's nice and cool here. On, on this type of property, we had to put AC and central heat. That cost us $16,200. And again, these prices are for both units. So this is for the entire building. The insulation, I think we did spray foam insulation on the walls, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but that cost us $12,450. Drywall and plaster, we had to drywall the whole place, plaster it, $12,180. Fresh paint, after all that is done, we have to make it look nice and uh, needs a fresh coat of paint, $10,200. New finished carpentry, right? We need baseboards, trim on windows, new doors, closet doors, bedroom doors, all that stuff, $12,900. Granite countertops. We usually go for granite or quartz here because of the area and the price point, we decided to go with quartz. That cost us $7,200. Stainless steel appliances, $7,400. And then we have to pay the driveway, $8,100. Uh, tree removal and landscape, $3,200. Uh, I combined some numbers here for Home Depot, Coopman Lumber, Building Supplies Outlet, which is a local uh, store, and then Amazon and Wayfair. We spend a ton on Amazon and Wayfair for finishes, right? So the pendant lights, um, vanities, and there's a bunch of stuff here that I don't even know because I'm not the one picking them, but I know I've seen the Wayfair invoices and, and they're <laughs> pretty, pretty high. Total for Home Depot, Coopman Lumber, Building Supplies, Amazon and Wayfair is 39,200. 39, Ouch. Staging and interior design, $6,000. So 
you guys watched the video, you saw the finished product here. We don't, I'm not the one doing all that, so I can't take all the credit. I actually work with uh, some really talented people for the interior design and for the staging. And I think we, we have a, a video out for staging, so go take a look at that, follow Chelsea, and uh, we'll post the link up. Permit fee, architect fee, surveying, that's $7,000. Final, portable toilet, dumpster, fences, all of that stuff that happens on the exterior when you start a project of this size is $9,000. So when you add all of that up, it's close to $350,000. It's a big number. Uh, we are in the Boston area, so everything is expensive here, but we pretty much spent more on renovating it than what we purchased this property for. I'm still happy with this number. I don't mind that we went over budget qu by quite a bit because next we're gonna share our profit and loss statement and you're gonna see that we made a ton of money on this property. So it was a smoking deal. I'm happy to spend $350,000 to make a lot of money in profit, um, but I know that's a big number. Hope this is beneficial to you guys. If you have any questions, go leave a comment. I'll reply to that. Follow us on our meetup um, page because we do these monthly events. And if you guys want to learn more about how we do stuff, come join us. Meetup.com slash Boston Real Estate Connection. Thank you.